Hi there, I'm Dr. Albert Chung, and welcome to Your Friendly Proctologist. In this place, we discuss the health of your bottom end, and at this time, I hope you can relate or learn a thing or two. Today, I want to continue our talk about anal fissures. In the last video, which I'll have linked here, uh, we talked about the basics of anal fissures. What does it feel like? What is it like to experience? And why does it feel like that? Today, I want to get into a little bit about the treatment. For sure, like we referred to before, we talked about how the internal anal muscle, which is inside the external outside anal muscle is the main contributor and the main culprit for fissures that last a long time. For those who are lucky enough to get the fissure to go away on its own, for sure congratulate yourself and consider yourself lucky that you don't have to deal with that pain every single time you go. But let's get into the list, shall we? So the first one, which I believe is essential, is a cream that can relax that internal muscle. I refer to it as Superman or Superwoman's anus because it's squeezing so hard that it's cutting the blood supply off and therefore not allowing that wound to heal, which if it heals and it's gone, then you won't have the fissure issues anymore. My favorite cream to use on, for this relaxation is called dill tiazem, and I'll have the spelling for you on the screen here. But this medication needs to be prescribed by the doctor, and you apply it just to the outside of your anus on top of the muscle. You can feel your muscle from the outside because if you ever put your finger there and you squeeze, it feels rock hard, right? Just like as if you were to squeeze your bicep muscle the cream will get absorbed through the skin and then that medication will work on the muscle in order to relax it just slightly. For those that are concerned that you're going to all of a sudden start leaking out like farts or poop, you don't have to worry about that. The amount of relaxation is so subtle. I mean, really, really slight but it is just enough for that blood flow to hopefully get through and start allowing that fissure to heal. And this medication is a blood pressure medication. So people who have high blood pressure can get a pill that they take through the mouth. But this we're kind of doing it in a different way or just applying it to the outside. But there's some warnings with this medication. You don't want to get it all over your hands and you don't want to use a big quantity of this. You just want to use a small pea-sized dot. What I tell people to do is use a Q-tip, place just a small dot on the tip of the Q-tip itself. So now you're not using your hands, it's not making contact with your skin. Open your butt cheeks up and then on your anus. So if I were to do this, you take your Q-tip and you just swipe it in the middle of your anus. You don't need to get it on the inside. You should not push this into the anus because the fissure will definitely not like that or appreciate it. And plus, we don't want to be sticking things in there. Once you swab that on the outside, just let your butt cheeks flap closed and the cream will eventually spread all over. When we're walking, when we're sitting down, everything, all the skin and the soft tissues around our bottom end will move around and that cream will get everywhere it needs to be. There is absolutely no concern about getting it all in the right places. The other thing I want to let you know about this cream is that I recommend people apply it four times a day. That's kind of a lot if you think about it. And the plus the fact that you need to do it kind of in a bathroom or a private setting, it can be a little bit difficult, but really I optimally four times a day. Why? Because you want to keep that muscle relaxed nearly all day long. So as soon as you get up in the morning, apply it once. Before lunch maybe, 
somewhere in the afternoon and then before bedtime. That way the cream is almost always on and we can almost ensure that the um, cream is carrying its action out on that muscle so that fissure can heal all day long. The other thing I want to let you know about that cream is that it is not a neosporin or a ointment, bacterial or a healing ointment uh, for that wound. So some people will say, well, I put it right on that wound and it didn't work. Well, you want it to get all over 360 degrees over that entire anus muscle. Why? Because of the fact that you, the entire muscle is squeezing, not just one little part. And this medication, like I said, is a blood pressure medication. It causes relaxation of muscle. So it does nothing to heal the wound. And if you only put it in one place, the rest of the muscle will stay really tight and where you applied it will be relaxed. So you're, kind of, you're not helping yourself there. You definitely want to make sure you just put the dot in the middle. It'll get everywhere and you just want to put it on the outside and that way optimally that medication will be working for you as much as possible. I said a lot about that medication because it's not straightforward. You don't just pop a pill and then that's the end of it. The other medications or ointments that doctors will like to use is also called nitroglycerin. You know, we hear that, we hear that word because of bombs, but um, this one, nitroglycerin, is used with heart attack patients. Um, it's also got a lot of other uses for it too. But in my opinion, that's not my favorite medication. Why? Because it can really lower people's blood pressure quite a bit. It varies from person to person, but if you are one of those people where the blood pressure goes down, a common side effect that happens is people feel dizzy, a little bit lightheaded, and if you gotta be using this four times a day like I recommend, you're probably not gonna like that reaction while you're working or if you have to do a lot of driving or standing. So I feel that diltiazem does a great job at relaxing the muscle and is much, much less likely to give you those side effects, much better tolerated in other words. There's another medication called nifedipine as well, and that ointment can also be used in the same fashion, and that's my number two go-to medication for this um, ointment. And it's usually in like a Vaseline base. Um, there's multiple different ways that pharmacists can make this after it's prescribed by someone like me, but I fully recommend that this be a part of the treatment plan and in many cases I find that when people don't use this cream the fissure is very likely not to make any progress. Well thank you so much for tuning in. This was a video just to focus on really that center, uh, what I feel like is the crux of fissure treatment. And I wanted to explain that to you fully and give that topic justice because I believe that it's the most important of my entire formula. There will be a part two coming about treatments because believe me, if it was as simple as putting on a cream, anal fissures would be extinct, which is what we kind of wish COVID would kind of do, huh? But either way, Let's move on to video number two, part two of the fissures. Thank you so much for joining in. That video will be coming out soon. Please like, subscribe, and ring that bell so that you don't miss a video and so that you could be on your way to better anal health. Take care, bye-bye.